high-tech engineering and this workshop's been working on interesting projects. Here we've got the final um, the completion of the liquid-cooled Jabiru 6-cylinder 3300. It came in as an air-cooled engine with all sorts of cylinder head over temp problems. And the boys in the machine shop have machined up these heads. We started with the patterns, sent them out to the foundry. They came back and we machined them up. Over the last few days we've been fitting them up. Here's all the plumbing. This is the water out, water coming in here. Uh, we're using a small uh, motorcycle radiator. It's about the same size as the Rotax 912 radiator, but perhaps slightly longer, but a bit thinner. It's got a thermo fan on it, but we don't have that connected at this stage. We don't believe we'll need it. It's just going to be running in the crop blast, but obviously in flight, it should be a lot more airspeed over it and should cool more adequately. If it cools in this arrangement, we know we'll be in good shape. Here's our filler cap above the, the water level of the rate of the heads themselves. We have a common rail return here and the same on the other side. As you can see, it's quite a neat package. The original oil lines are here on the rocket gear. The original rocket covers. We've used the Jabiru push rods, exhaust, intake pipes, spark plugs, spark plug leads, everything. The only thing, one of the things we've deleted is these. As you can see, the heads no longer have any fins on them whatsoever. Just some. Um, some styling here, but there are they're not fins at all, um, and that'll make you see the back of these. Um, we well, haven't seen ducks. Now, if you ever study these cooling ducks and you own a Jabiru, I want you to ask the question: How does the crankcase and the cylinders get cooled? All the air cools the heads, and and because of these rubber baffles sealing tightly against your cowling, technically not one scintilla of air gets to the crankcase, which I believe can't be right. The way we will throw these in the bin, the way we expect it to work is liquid cooling in the heads, which will take all the heat out of the heads very efficiently, and the top portion of the cylinders, and then we've still got air coming through those openings, which will be allowed to ventilate and cool the six cylinders and the course of the crankcase itself, and any other accessories such as the coils, starter motor, whatever. Um, but yeah, by putting these on your aircraft, technically you're not allowing any air to cool the centre section of the engine or cylinders. So we'll get rid of that. And that's pretty much it. What have we got back inside? The water pump. Yeah, here's where the water pump's located. It's the smallest Davies Craig water pump we could um, we could find, which is an 80 litre unit. And as you can see, it's very small. It'd just be lucky if it weighed a couple of pounds. It can be mounted at most attitudes. Here we're just for the convenience of the test rig, we're just we're actually just it's just suspended between the hoses. This hose is picking up the cold water from the base of the radiator, feeding the inlet as a uh, centrifugal pump in here, a vein type pump, and then that pushes the water out to this spider manifold. And then we've got our three lines off each side of that manifold, feeding the, the three individual heads on each side, on each bank. And once the water goes through the heads, we pick up off this common rail, we join that common rail together with the other side, and then go back down to the top of the radiator for cooling. So it's all quite nicely, nice and neat, uh, but we believe on our neck, when we put, eventually put finish the test statically and go to put this on the aircraft, we'll um, refine this further and maybe even run a common rail on the base as well. But for the moment, this is quite convenient. Fit the early six cylinder, late six cylinder, and the four cylinder, both early and late. So we haven't run this yet. We've actually just finished it. I'll fire up the pump. We might hear it. It's very quiet, so we'll turn our master on. And the water pump's going on now. And you can just hear it burbling away there now. Now the way we'll do this on the test rig is we'll just have a pump to switch it on and off and we'll experiment with the temperatures and see what it see what it does when the pump's on and when it's off and whether the pilot needs to leave it on full time or he can leave it off for warm up. And then ultimately we'll probably put a thermostat switch in there which using the temperature of the, the water will bring the uh, will switch the electric pump on and off. And in case that switch fails, the pilot will still have an override switch so he can manually turn the electric. This fitting here is, a, is the, we believe, would most likely be one of the hotter heads on the Jabiru, being that it's, it's the furthest back. We've put our uh, water temperature sender in the centre of that aluminium uh, banjo bolt. And that, of course, is uh, going into the water jacket and the head itself. So that will serve the purpose of picking up uh, water temperature. The other advantage with the system is, once the engine's shut down, you can actually leave the electric pump on and cool the heat soak out of the engine. So I've just gone aboard. We've already calibrated the temperature gauge. 
we put the thermocouple into some boiling water and it reads a shade over 100. So we'll be monitoring our water and head temperature with this gauge. It's good for 120. We would like to see it run somewhere between about 100 and 110, maybe a little bit less. We'll see. Of course, this will all improve once we get the masses of air flow through the radiator in the aircraft. Anyway, enough talk, more action. We're going to fire it up now.